Today on Goji Center, Skull Island will once again witness the arrival of one of the most feared assassins of all time. This isn't just any dinosaur. It's not just any monster. This is Ark's Giga. That's right, this colossal predator will be taken from its island and dropped into the most terrifying biome of all time. Will the fauna in this island hold its own against the Giga, or will they all turn into this lizard's lunch? What will Kong or the Skullcrawlers do when they see this animal kill their food? Subscribe if you love prehistoric carnage! Coming up, Ark's Giga in Skull Island! In a previous episode, we discussed what would happen if this Giga stepped on both Isla Nublar and Isla Sorna. The results were catastrophic for the inhabitants of those two islands. This time, Ark's Giga will face a roster of arguably more deadly creatures, varying in size, animal classes, and most importantly, intelligence. We are quickly going to recap the Giga's two most important attributes that might help it survive a little longer on this island, as well as an additional one involving its corporal build. First and foremost, getting attacked by this Giga or any Carcharodontosaurid will put you at the mercy of some pretty sharp bladed teeth made for cutting and promoting tons of blood loss. In Ark, this attack takes form as its gnashed ability, inflicting a temporary health loss debuff on the victim. Except in the real world and in our scenario today, any unarmored animal will suffer for the same effect but for a longer time. Because unlike in the game, you don't miraculously stop bleeding in real life. Also, let's quickly cover this animal's in-game rage ability, which is triggered by receiving tons of damage in a short amount of time. This allows the Giga to inflict even more lethal damage on its opponent. This will take form in the real world as an adrenal response in this animal's body, allowing it to soak up damage as well. And finally, this animal's size. In the previous episode, we entertained the idea that this creature measured around 71 feet in length, based on this dossier image. In this episode, we'll align ourselves with the size that is seen during gameplay. Yeah, the size seen in the dossier is a way more conservative estimate. But here we see that this big dude measures approximately 43 to 45 meters in length, or up to 148 feet in length. <laughs> That's right, guys, this big fella is not here to play around. So, now that we have a good idea of what we're up against, let's unleash the Giga! The MonsterVerse iteration of Skull Island is actually a really big place, full of big monsters that come in the form of mammals, reptiles, giant hawks, and more. Somewhat similar to the behemoth scene in Call of Dragons, today's sponsor. An MMO fantasy conquest game where you take command of armies of elves, orcs, dragons, and other massive monsters in huge battlefields, making this an epic real-time strategy experience for us fans of monsters and destruction. You see these big monsters? Here, they call all eight of them behemoths, and your job is to hunt and capture your own. It's not easy. Your intelligence and battle acumen will be put to the test as you find the right combination of troops to bring this thing down. But once you do, you can train it, name it, and send it to battle for your alliance to gather experience, raise its abilities, and turn it into a formidable monster of mass destruction. Just don't forget to feed it, dude! You can even crush your enemies with them in PvP or PvE battles and turn the tide of battle using the special unique abilities of these monsters. Like the Dire Bear, for instance. Apart from inflicting a massive charge to your enemies, this creature will increase your own legion's HP with each damage dealt to your foes. Or this three-headed Hydra, who will reduce the enemy's HP by raining poison mist, or even raining fire from above with your own dragon. All behemoths are yours for the taking, so make sure you click on the link below or scan this code and play on both mobile and PC and even crossplay between the two devices. Goji Center peeps can use code CODMONSTER to get a head start with cool in-game rewards and show the other players that Goji Center players are the best Dragon Masters. Thanks to Call of Dragons for sponsoring this video, and now we can return to Skull Island. A vast environment. So big, in fact, that a full-grown Kong took a while to realize he was contained within an artificial environment that was a fraction of the entire surface area of the island. All animals here have territories where they thrive relatively comfortably. Meaning that when Ark's Giga lands here, the first thing he's also going to do is find territory. The best place for him would be an area similar to where he thrives back in Ark, which would be the high-altitude regions of the map. 
Yeah, this guy isn't stupid. Here, he has a good view over all things that happen below his scope of vision and where he can easily spot any prey or threats that may pull up on him. For good reason. In the previous episode involving Ark's Giga, you may recall that this guy was pretty much unrivaled in terms of size, with the only animal getting close to it being the Mosasaur. Here, things are a little different. There are some animals that more than just rival but potentially surpass the Giga in size. A monster like this Giga, or any predator for that matter, seeks to find its place in the food chain as quickly as possible, sizing up threats and quantifying them as he towers through Skull Island's jungles. Inevitably, he will end up running into some of the main ones, beginning with the Mother Longlegs, who towers over the bamboo forests. These will be easy to spot and bring down. Since this Giga's jaw can encompass the entire body of one of these spiders, one chomp from these thick serrated teeth will be more than enough to crush the body organs of this arachnid. Fortunately for these spiders, the Giga was just strolling by looking for higher territory. However, if this acquired taste of spider proves to be delicious for this Giga, there's no guarantee that this predator won't stop by again for some tasty spiders. As the Giga moves through the forest, he'll start running into other types of predators, such as these death jackals, the raptors of this island. These are extremely small in comparison to this Giga. It's possible that the Giga won't even bother chasing these things down at first, since the caloric intake wouldn't be enough to make up for the energy spent chasing these things down. It's like you running on foot chasing a half of a speedy granola bar. Not really worth it, dude. So, having said this, any animal smaller than these guys would probably be safe from the Giga if, and only if, they keep their distance, or if they stay in small packs. We'll return to this concept in a little bit, because there is a smaller set of living beings on this island that shouldn't feel safe just yet. <laughs> As mentioned in many previous episodes, living organisms seek shelter, food, and water first before anything else. Yes, big animals get thirsty too, and they need lots of water. The issue here is that fresh bodies of water on this island tend to be inhabited by some pretty gnarly creatures. But are they enough to bring down this Giga? Skull Island is so far home to a couple crocodilians, one which relies purely on ambush tactics such as this siren jaw crocodile, a creature who waits on prey to confuse its mouth with a floating cave or shelter, only for them to find out that this was the complete opposite, and the next being a swole crocodile who relies on both ambush and pursuit tactics to pounce on prey. But measuring against this animal, there's simply no competition. Same applies to this other animal, the Swamp Locust, who relies solely on ambush tactics on specific types of prey animals. Given their size difference and considering that this Giga kills anything smaller than itself, going to drink water at a swamp will be more or less like going to a buffet. Unfortunately for these three creatures, Ark's Giga is just too big to attack. On the contrary, these animals will leverage their similar attributes to the surrounding fauna, staying low and deciding not to bother this Giga, letting it drink in peace lest they become this animal's appetizer. But we aren't done with fresh water just yet. If the Ark Giga decides to wander by a lake like this one, he may find himself in a sticky situation. This right here is a mire squid, a cephalopod of gigantic proportions capable of releasing boiling ink. Can this thing bring down the Giga? Well, let's measure them up. Mire squids can measure up to 110 feet in length. This surpasses this by almost 40 feet and dwarfs this thing in terms of mass. But does this matter? No, it is quite possible that this mire squid could inflict deep wounds to this Giga with its beak, which, by the way, rotates like blades. But this would then in turn 1. Activate said rage mode we discussed earlier, and 2. Giga would retreat backwards to dry land away from this body of water. Since this squid does not have the sufficient mass to drag the Giga down into the water, the Giga would win this tug-of-war match and drag the squid onto dry land. Would this hot ink do anything? Maybe to another giant theropod, but this Giga has something else up its sleeve. Insane levels of health. 
This takes form in this world as corporal resistance to the elements and insane rate of recovery thanks to this animal's implied high immune system. Yeah, this thing can recover pretty fast and can tank a ton of damage, which is necessary given that this thing tends to step on lava quite frequently in its biome. So a splash of hot ink would probably just make this Giga even more angry. These teeth would slice through this creature's squishy tentacles, causing this creature to cut its losses and retreat, and possibly never attack this Giga again. Or worse, provide the Giga with its first course of seafood. So far, we find that Giga is faring pretty well against freshwater creatures. But now, let's turn our attention to the even less fortunate inhabitants of this island. But real quick, before we do that, we wanted to take note of something really important. We see down here that you are subscribed, at least we hope you are, but please help us understand how you watch Goji Center but you're not subscribed to Goji Shorts. What is this madness? Goji Shorts is a channel full of fun 3D animated clips of your favorite kaiju and monsters like this Giga ruining the lives of unfortunate civilians for your entertainment. Don't let them die in vain, dude! Subscribe! Okay, let's return to some of the medium-sized creatures in this island. Here's three, Icarus Tigris or Holy Tiger, Skur Buffalo, and Spore Mantis. Here's how they measure up against Arx Giga. Out of these three, the animal that would give the most trouble to the Giga would be this fella, the Holy Tiger. Not because it's a giant tiger with antlers, but because of its hallucinogenic ability it can inflict on its prey. It's unclear on whether or not this can affect larger creatures, but if it does, this animal's weapons are still not enough to inflict a single lethal blow before the Giga's rage mode kicks in and bypasses the hallucinogenic effects. The results would end up being another murked cat. Skur buffaloes? Well, these guys are interesting, since they could technically injure this guy in critical locations. Let us explain. Full-grown skur buffaloes are not to be considered pushovers. This bony mass on top of their skulls could pack enough force to crush bone, especially if they do this in large numbers. Whether they have the balls to do this or not is up for debate. Otherwise, these creatures would be nothing except a source of food for this giant predator, which will cause some issues down the line. The Spore Mantis here is the lucky one. Since it's arguably the most camouflaged creature in this island, Arx Giga would likely not notice these at all if they just stay low, which they do in the presence of a larger threat. Unless, of course, it gets stepped on and, well, yeah, bye-bye Mantis. We'll throw in another major medium-sized creature for you really knowledgeable people of the MonsterVerse, the Magma Turtle. Before the arrival of Arx Giga, this animal lived in peace thanks to its biology. This turtle is a living magma rock. Anything stupid enough to try to attack it would just have a mouthful of lava. There wasn't really anything that could kill it apart from Camazots, who technically isn't a native inhabitant of this island anyways. Could Arx Giga kill it? And would it? The Giga is four times the size of this magma turtle. The issue here is that unlike every other animal the Giga could kill, you really can't eat this one. The good thing about being a magma turtle in this place is that nobody has any real reason to kill you because they can't even eat you. And yet, this Giga is known for killing everything with a pulse whether it eats it or not, meaning that getting your head stepped on by a sadistic, bloodthirsty theropod from hell is now a reality. That's thanks to this animal's heat resistance. Continuing on with the murder of innocence, we find ourselves returning to the small guys we mentioned earlier. If you are small, you're not worth the caloric intake, except when you live in large, concentrated numbers. Again, with our example of the granola bar, you wouldn't think that it's worth it, but if these are slow moving and live together in some sort of enclosure, then you may find it worth your while now. Yeah, we're talking about the iwi population in this island. These people lived in fortified villages. These forts are built to keep out some of the hostile fauna from the island. Every other animal knows that behind this wall, a banquet awaits. These have been breached before during the events of Skull Island Birth of Kong, where this crackhead blew up the walls bringing in a swarm of mother longlegs. Before the events of 1973, there really wasn't anything big enough other than Ramorak that could bring this fortification down. Now there is Arx Giga. 
As this dinosaur tears through these dense island jungles, this creature will inevitably catch a whiff of these humans. The higher concentration of these people would draw the Giga to their village, proceeding to tear down through these fortifications and begin to massacre these people. But messing with a few things in this biome has a few repercussions. Going back to the Skur buffaloes, you are now messing with another predator's source of food. If you go around killing innocent creatures just because, then you are going to anger a certain someone on this island. Yep, we're talking about Skullcrawlers and Kong. Being able to fend off both of these monsters would almost guarantee this Giga a comfortable stay in this island. For the purposes of this video, we will entertain the idea that this Giga arrived during the events of 1973, where Kong was around 104 feet in height. That is less than the length of Ark's Giga, but he is much taller. This ratio seems a bit familiar, similar to the King Kong vs. V-Rex situation. So, can this teenager Kong defeat a full-grown Giga? This episode would be extended another 20 minutes if we try to explain every detail, but in this particular situation, this face-off would be easily settled with one attribute, ranged weapons, which Ark's Giga lacks. That's right, because of the lack of any ranged weaponry, this animal will literally be at the mercy of Kong when it comes within range. Using its impeccable accuracy and its ability with throwing makeshift spears, this Giga would become the hunted if caught in Kong's scope of vision. Keep in mind that Kong wouldn't kill this animal if they just both were sane enough to stay out of each other's way. But that's not the case with this Giga, because this species is simply not wired this way. They kill everything on sight, and that just does not go with Kong. Even the Skullcrawlers have a reason to kill, simply because of their metabolism. Anything in front of them that fits in their mouth, they will eat, and the Giga is also included. Perhaps, maybe not the juvenile skull crawlers. These little guys will most likely even serve as food for Ark's Giga as well. Their armorless bodies will provide absolutely no protection from the Giga's gnashing bites, meaning that any aftermath against skull crawlers will be largely dependent on how large these skull crawlers are. A skull crawler larger than the size of Ramorak would probably have a good chance at bringing down a Giga. But a crawler in equal size is a matchup that could go either way. This one is up for debate and will be featured in a future episode. Subscribe not to miss it. The question to answer is the following. Is what this animal brings to the table enough to help it survive on this island? The answer really depends on how this Giga behaves itself. Don't worry, we'll give you a final verdict in a little bit, but given how this animal behaves, it is really unlikely that the big neighboring creatures will give it a pass. On one end, this animal annihilates all innocent lifeforms that come across its way. It's taking away this animal's source of food, and not only that, this Giga went out of its way to attack the Iwi. Now, if we look at the likelihood of this Giga choosing to not do these things, the chances are really low, simply because this thing is instinctively wired to kill and repeat. This leaves no other option for both Kong and Skullcrawler to fight this thing until it's destroyed. For extras, we'll go ahead and state that both fully grown Kong and Camazots would easily make quick work of a Giga. Facing off against Titans is completely out of the Giga's league. It took the most dangerous biome in the world to finally put an end to Ark's Giga. Had it not been for its instinct to kill absolutely everything, maybe this animal would have found another home. Thanks for watching this episode, and if you like this content, subscribe to Goji Center and also subscribe to Goji Shorts, or the Giga will eat you in your sleep. Ha <laughs> ha.